Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. My name is Robert Petito and in this video we're going to challenge ourselves to see if we can replace an entire table's worth of data into a singular cell. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that we call this the trebuchet method. It's just another fancy term for inline arrays, where we can take an entire data set and condense it to an array of string values living in a table of our choosing, so that way we can access this data anywhere that we'd like. Now the whole point of using the trebuchet method is to eliminate eliminate unnecessary tables. Sometimes storing values in a singular cell is enough. Also, if you've watched any of my videos on the trebuchet method, you know that the main limitation is that you can only track one piece of information at a time. For example, if we're trying to keep track of our favorites, we could have a trebuchet array of favorited row IDs so that we can keep track of the actual items themselves. But what if we need to keep track of not just the row ID, but maybe a timestamp as to when we favorited something, or maybe some notes that go along with the item that we favorited, or maybe we're specifying a quantity of items, or we need to actually keep track of several different columns or fields inside of that one item that we're trying to store in that inline array via the trebuchet method. Well, in this video, we're gonna describe how you can do that using JSON. If you've never heard of JSON before, it stands for JavaScript Object Notation, which sounds a lot scarier than it really is. All it is is organized data in a list format, right? So you can see how different data is related to each other in a readable, list of key value pairs. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to craft the JSON for each of our line items, how to store that JSON inside of our multiple files picker in order to create our trebuchet array, and then finally, how you can view, update, and delete JSON objects from within inside of our trebuchet array. All right, let's get started. In order to demo this JSON trebuchet method, I'm going to show you an app type that I get requested on all the time, and that's being able to create orders of order items. Now, certainly we could create an order items table, but I'm gonna to try to build this app without an order items table, because really after the order is placed, you never really have to go back and take a look at those order items unless you're trying to see like your previous order history or something like that. Um, but I'm gonna try to avoid using an order history altogether and show you how to create that more dynamically towards the end of our video. Our data here uses the users table, which is the people placing the orders, items, which will be the items that people can add to an order, and finally an orders table. And we're gonna see if we can group the entire list of order items into a singular cell in our orders table. Now, if you haven't yet watched my first video on the trebuchet method, go ahead and click up here. You can also click the link in the description below. I highly recommend watching that video first because it talks about some of the concepts we're gonna use in this video today. Moving on, so in order to create our trebuchet functionality, we're going to use a basic multiple files column, and we're gonna create this in our users table. And again, the multiple files column is unique in the fact that it's a basic column type, but it's the only basic column that can read and write array values. So I'm gonna choose multiple files, and we're gonna call this order items, save. And I'm gonna create an identical column here in our orders table. So order items, and it's in multiple files, and save. All right, now the only way you can write values into a multiple files column is through a file picker, an image picker, or by using a set column action where you're setting some other array into this column. So that means we have to create an array of values. And the array that we want to override in this column here is our existing list of order items plus whatever new items we're trying to add to our order. All right, so that means in our items table, we are going to create an array of items. Now, in our previous video, we sent just the row ID over, but in this case, we want to display more than just the row ID because maybe we also want to keep track of how many items we're adding at a time or the price of the item because it might change from 
year to year or something. So we want to keep track of the price it was when we actually ordered the item, maybe some notes to go along with the item. So let's go ahead and create some of these columns. Now these columns are all going to be user specific because as different users are using the app, they might choose their own quantity and their own notes, and we don't want those values overriding other people when they're trying to order things. Now the first column we're gonna add is a quantity column. This is gonna be a number column, and we'll fine tune it a little bit. And we're gonna make sure it's user specific. And save. Okay, next we're going to add a notes column. It's gonna be a text column, and again, user specific. All right, so we have quantity, notes, price, we have a row ID already, that's great. All right, so the next step is to create our JSON object for this row. So to do that, we, are, we can use either the JSON object column or the JSON template column. The object column is a little bit easier to use, so I'm gonna choose that. I'm just gonna call this JSON. And you can find the JSON object column under integrations, JSON, and then JSON object. Or you can just search for JSON and choose JSON object. All right, so here's where you're setting up your key value pairs. So basically you're saying what the item is, you can name this whatever you'd like, and then what the value is, okay? And these are gonna be the items that we wanna keep track of whenever we're adding an item to our order. We're gonna add a few different things here. Okay, the first thing we're gonna add is the row ID of the item. I'll just call this ID. I like to keep everything real lowercase and short as simple as possible when I'm using or when I'm working with JSON. All right, next, maybe the item name, just in case the name happens to change in the future. I want to preserve that. Okay, we'll choose the price of the item. Okay, then we want our quantity and our notes. So we already have notes in there, so we're just going to choose quantity like that. Save. All right, so just so you see what this looks like. Like in our app, let's say we want to add, you know, two items and we want to have some notes on the item. Okay. Our JSON object is going to look something like this. So we're going to keep track of what the value actually is and then just a label for that item. And you see that it arranges it in key value pairs like this. All right. Ultimately, what we want then is an array of these items. Okay. So to create an array of JSON object items, we need to use the make array column. All right, so we're gonna call this add item array. It's gonna be a make array column. And we're gonna combine the order items that the user has already added. So in this case, the user profile order items and the new item, which is gonna be our JSON, like that. All right, when you use the make array column, now we have an array of items. All right, so then next, we need to build out some functionality in our layout. All right, so you see here, I already have a collection of items. You can arrange it however you'd like, but it's basically just a screen pointing to our items, and then this collection is of the items, and I have a button on here that says add to order. This button doesn't do anything at the moment. Okay, so we probably want to show some sort of form screen where we can choose the quantity, and the uh, any notes related to that order item. Uh, we could have also placed it on the details screen itself here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, select this add to order button as the way we're gonna add things. Okay. Our actions here on our add to order, is gonna be to show a new pop-up screen where they can uh, select the number of items that they wanna order and any notes related to that thing. So we're gonna say a show new screen it's gonna be an overlay. We could also do a slide in if you'd like. I'm gonna do a slide in on mobile here just so you can kind of see it back and forth. All right, so when we select add to order, we now have a new screen for this item. All right, and then we need to ask for those different variables. All right, so for quantity, it's gonna be a number entry. So we're gonna choose a number entry component and we're gonna point it to our quantity. Minimum value should be one. And then we're gonna uh, ask for notes. So this can be a text entry. So the column will be our notes field. Make this a little bit larger, like this. 
All right, so then we need a final button press that's going to add this item and all of the JSON that goes with it to our user order. So I'm going to create a button block like this. And the first button is going to be add to order. Second button is going to be cancel. And for the cancel, we can just put a go back action. Uh, typically, what I probably would do on this go back action would be to actually um, create a custom action that clears these values and then goes back. So then that way, if I were to ever open up this item again, the quantity in the notes wouldn't be pre-filled with what I had filled out. But in this case, um, just for sake of time, I'm just going to just choose go back so we can hit cancel and then back to uh, order like that. All right, so then the add to order, this is gonna be our set column action. Now, I also wanna set column action. I want to then clear these values and show notification that the item was actually added to our order. So this is gonna be a custom action then. So I'm gonna go actions for items, create new action, and our untitled action here will be add to order. Okay, they start us off with an open link. I'm gonna change that to a set column values. And the values that we're gonna add are to our user profile row. And the order items are gonna be the add item array, like that. Okay, then next, we're gonna do a set column value where we're gonna clear our quantity and our notes. So that way, the next time we open it up, it'll be reset for us. And then we're going to close our overlay so we get kicked back to our list of items. And then finally, we'll show notification that says add it to order and done. So when I select add to order, that JSON object that has the quantity to notes of the item, that it's a microscope for a certain amount of price. Oh, we should put our price on here, maybe under the emphasis like that. Okay, and then it should close down our overlay. It now says add it to order and away we go. All right, let's add a couple more things to our order. Let's add some pipettes. We need a 10 of these, small size, add to order. And then let's add a pH meter. We want one of those and no notes. Okay, if I go back to my user profile table, we now see that we have under our order items, we have three items, one, two, three. And you see all this kind of cool JSON data that's living inside of there. All right, now this begs the question, how can we view these order items? So in our use case here, we're gonna create a helper table to view these items. Now I thought the whole premise of using the trebuchet method was to eliminate the use of an extra table. And that's true, except that if we were to use a dedicated table, that table would just be an endless table, where in this case, our helper table, we can, we can put a hard limit on it. Maybe we only want people to add 10 items to an order at a time. That means we only need a 10 row table and call it a day. So we're gonna add a new table here. We're gonna call this order helper table, order helper. For sake of time, we're just gonna go ahead and add 10 rows. Next, we need to number these rows with an index column because whenever we're dealing with arrays and helper tables, it's good to have an index. So if you watched any of my videos before, there's a neat little trick where we can add a row ID column like that. And then we create a lookup of those row IDs. I just want to call it row IDs. Lookup. And we're going to look up that exact same table, the order helper, and then row ID. So now all of our row IDs are in this one cell. And then we can use a find element index. So I'm just going to search for index. I'm going to call it index. And we're going to do a find element index. The values are our row IDs, and we're going to find the row ID. And then you see we get this nice little auto numbering here in Glide. This is helpful when you wanna have like 100 items and you don't have to have the numbers zero through 99. If you're only gonna add like 10 rows, you, I probably could have just typed this in. It would have been just as fast. Um, but now this is dynamic, which is nice. I'm gonna delete this name column. All right, so now what we want is to get each of those JSON objects that we added to our users table on their own row. So to do that, we need to bring in the array. And because that array is inside of our users table, we can actually make use of the make array column to find it. So I'm gonna call this order items. It's gonna be a make array column. It's gonna be a one item make array. 
where I'm going to choose our user profile order items like that. All right, so this mimics exactly what we see in our users table. All right, now we need to pick out just the one item from this array. So we have an array, we have an index. So in order to pick it out line by line, we use a single value column. So I'm going to call this just line item. It's going to be a single value column. We're going to get the uh, from the start, and the start is not going to be from zero, but it's going to be dynamic. We're going to choose the index here. And we're going to choose from our order items. And now you see that the JSON that we added to our order is now on its own line. And now that we have a single line of JSON, now we want to pick out all of those values that we had added. So we're going to parse out this JSON. So to do that, we use a JSON query column or a query JSON column. All right. So, and we're just going to do it uh, item by item. So the first thing is the ID of that item. So I'm going to search for JSON, and here it's query JSON. The JSON we're going to uh, parse out is the line item. And I could type out what the key is that we're looking for. For example, ID, we'll pull out the ID, or name, we'll pull out the name. So we could type it out, or we can just choose it from the drop down here. So I'm going to just choose the drop down because it's less typing. All right, so there's the ID. Now I can duplicate. I'm going to choose next to the name. Okay, next. I'm going to choose the price. And you see that our price has been, it's just a raw number value. So if we want to display that, we're going to have to format it using a math column. All right, our notes. Oh, the one thing we didn't add is timestamp. I, I wanted to add that to our order as well. So I'm going to go back and, and change that. All right, so quantity. And then I want timestamp. So I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to actually type out timestamp, which doesn't exist yet for any of my items. So back in my items table, I'm going to modify my JSON real fast. I'm going to add one more thing. It's going to be the current date and time. And we're going to add a timestamp to this like that. So then that way it keeps track of when we added that item. And what's going to be nice is that we can actually sort by that timestamp too. So that way we know that our items will always be in the same order as to which we added them. So here is our item. Now, if we wanted to remove an item from our order, what we could do is take this list of order items and then subtract the item that's found in this list. So to do that, we're gonna use a remove element column. Uh, the remove element column we used in our last video, but we actually were able to add it here in the items table. We can't do it here uh, in this case because these values are not gonna match up identically anymore. Because the moment I clear the quantity or the notes, these blank values won't match what I entered. Plus, if now that I'm adding a timestamp, as time goes on, it's not gonna match either. So the only way to match identically the line item with what I added in my orders is going to be in that helper table here. Okay, so to remove an item, we're gonna call this remove item array. Type is going to be a remove element. So the values, this is the array that we're choosing from, is going to be the order items. We could have also chosen user profile order items. It's the exact same list. And we're going to remove the line item from each row. Okay. And so now if we want to remove an item, we can view this helper table and then select this item and use this to override our users table. Okay. So as you see here, um, this value only has two, the pipettes and the pH meter, because we removed the microscope, right? And the second item only has microscope and pH meter, right? Microscope, pH meter. And the last one only has microscope and pipettes, all right? So if we want to remove the item, all we're really doing is replacing our order items with this, uh, with this array. Okay, before we move too much farther on in this table, let's actually build out this interface. That way you can actually see how this might look. I'm going to create a new tab here. We're going to do from the data, 
order helper table. This order helper is going to be user specific, which is wonderful because it's pointing to our user profile table. Uh, typically with an order, we kind of want to see it maybe as a list like this. We can see a list of our items that we're ordering. Um, right now it's showing all of our rows. We actually want to hide those because we don't want to see anything that doesn't belong to our order. So to do that, we're going to click on the collection, go to options, we're going to filter the data, and we're going to filter to where the ID of the item that we had happened to add is not empty. All right, this looks a little bit cleaner. Okay, in this collection, uh, we don't need to search for anything. We don't need to add anything from here. Uh, I really even don't want them editing anything. I'll leave that for now though. Uh, we see here that the image, we probably could have brought in the image as well, uh, but if we want to, we can actually just do a lookup of the image. And to display more items here, maybe the name is the title, our description can be our notes, the meta could be the price of the item. Oh, but we actually want the quantity as well, don't we? So maybe we wanna see what the final price would be because of the quantity. So let's actually craft a little bit of what this might look like back in our order helper table. Okay, so I wanna combine maybe the name and the quantity together. So I'm gonna add a column to the right. We'll call this name quantity. It's gonna be a template column. And we're gonna choose the name of the item, right? Then in parentheses, we'll do times and then quantity like that. So we'll do name and quantity, where name is gonna be the name of the item and quantity will be the quantity of the item. All right, so this can be our title instead. That looks a little bit cleaner. Okay, and then for price, we actually want the price times the quantity. So I'm gonna call this uh, total price. It's gonna be a math column. And we're gonna do our price times our quantity. And because it's in dollars, put the currency symbol in there and then hit save. While we're here, let's grab that image to make it look a little bit prettier. So next to our ID, I'm gonna say rel item. It's gonna be a relation column. And we're gonna relate the ID of the item back to the items table, row ID. And then we can look up the image. So we'll say image, it's gonna be a lookup. And we're gonna look up from the relation that image. Okay, so now our uh, little order here can look a little prettier. Let's, just, let's call it order. All right, so title is gonna be that name quantity. Meta will now be our total price, that looks better. And our image is our image, cool. All right, and typically with an order, you're gonna see the total. Now again, because our order helper table is user specific, because all these values point to our users order items column, let's go ahead and create the roll up right here in our users table. So I'm gonna add a new column here. We're gonna call this total, or order total. Type is gonna be a roll up column. And we're gonna roll up our order helper table total price. And we're gonna calculate the sum, units again, dollar sign, like that, and save. And now we can display this in our order. Um, just kind of simply, I'll just do some text. We can right align our text. Let's make it larger. And let's point it to our user profile, order total. Like that. All right, to finalize the aesthetics, let's change the icon here to a cart. Okay, and what's nice about this method is that you can actually add more than one of the same kind of item. So if I wanna add the microscope again, I can. Let's add to order. Let's add one of these, but now we're gonna choose uh, an electron microscope or something. Add to order. And now we should see that the microscope has been added at the bottom. And hopefully now it has the timestamp. And it does. Okay, let's call this timestamp. Like that. 
All right, let's remove these three items. So in order to remove the item, again, we need to do a set column action where we're gonna set the remove item array and we're gonna take that and replace what's in our current users table. In the collection, we're gonna to go to actions and we're gonna enable advanced actions. And we're gonna add another dropdown action here. And let's call this remove item. It's gonna be a set column values. And we're gonna set not this item, but rather the user profile row. And we're gonna set the order items to be our remove item array. Now, this is only gonna be a one-click remove item. If you wanted to build out like a two-step process, this could have been a show new screen. And on that screen, you have a couple of buttons where the buttons then could be to remove the item or cancel, just like we did with adding the item. But for sake of time, we're gonna just keep it simple. All right, I'm gonna remove these first three items because they didn't have timestamps. So I'm gonna remove, remove, and remove. So now again, our orders array in our users table only has one item in it now. So that's kind of lonely. Let's go add a couple more items. I'm gonna add uh, those pipettes back. I want five of them, no notes. And then I want an autoclave, two of those, um, brush nickel. Add to order. Okay. And we see that we have those in order now. And to keep our order intact, we're going to go ahead and sort this list by the timestamp column. So we've taken care of adding items to our order. We've taken care of removing items from the order. But what about updating the items in our order? Now, these items are again living inside of our order helper table. So it makes sense that we build out that functionality here. So what are the things that we might want to edit? In my use case, I might want them to edit the quantity and their notes. So that means I need some user specific columns just like I had in my items table. So I'm gonna add those in here, um, maybe after this remove item array column. So I'm gonna call this new quantity. It's gonna be a number column, just like before. User specific, let's tidy it up a bit and save. And then we'll do the same thing for notes. Let's call it new notes, user specific. Now, because we're dealing with JSON, we want to replace our current JSON, this line item, right, with whatever we happen to type in here. One of the most efficient ways of doing this is creating a new little JSON snippet of just these two items, and then using some JSONata magic to replace the values in our original line item. So this is going to involve a couple of columns. So the first one is gonna to be to combine the new values in a JSON object column. So I'm gonna call this new JSON. It's gonna be a JSON object. And the new items are our new quantity and our new notes, but they need to match the same values as before, which was just quantity and notes. So. We have to make sure that whatever values you had used originally in, the, in that items table, you use here as well. Here we said that I wanted one uh, microscope and it's electron microscope. So if I wanted to change it to three regular, right? We see that our new JSON now has these values. Next, we have to craft a little formula and that's gonna take these new values to replace the old values. This is called a query. So we're gonna craft the query using a template column. So I'm gonna call this new query. It's gonna be a template column. And the query I'm gonna craft is gonna be a JSONata function. The query JSON column lets you write out JSONata functions in order to return and also manipulate existing JSON. It's very, very powerful, and I don't even know the ins and outs of it very well. I constantly refer back to the JSONata website or lean on chat GPT in order to help me craft these JSONata queries. But this one that's going to be very useful for us is the merge function. So the merge function allows you to add new key value pairs to an existing JSON object or if the keys are the same, like for us, it's the quantity and notes, 
instead of adding on to our JSON object column, it will actually replace the old values in the original array. To craft our function, we're gonna do a dollar sign merge, that's how JSON Auto knows we're calling a function. Then we wrap those in parentheses. Inside of those, we wrap them in square brackets, that's just what it wants. And then inside of that, we have our original JSON. So I'm gonna use this, the uh, variable one here for our original, comma, then the new JSON two, okay? So we're gonna add two replacements that are gonna replace one and two. The first one is going to be our original line item, like that. And the second one is gonna be our new, like that. All right, now that we've crafted our query, we're gonna use this query inside of a query JSON column in order to craft that new line item. So final column here is gonna be new line item. It's gonna be a query JSON column. Okay, the JSON here is going to be our line item. And the query is going to be the merge, which is our new query, like that. Okay, so just so you see what this is doing, originally we had one quantity, notes electron. We wanna replace that with three quantity and notes regular. And if we look at the new line item, that's what we should see, notes regular, quantity three. And everything else stays the same, right? And if there isn't any new JSON, then the item stays the same. So now that we have a new line item, in order to replace our order with the new line item, we need to craft an array just like we did over here in our items with the make array. But in this case, we can't just simply add the new line item to our existing order items because otherwise we're gonna have the old and the new in the same order. We want to use this new line item instead of the original item, which means we need to remove the original item first, which we already did in this remove item array, right? The remove item array is when we were removing that value. So what we can do now is actually use a make array column that's gonna combine this remove item array, which already removed the original, and add the new. All right, so we're gonna call this uh, new line item array. It's gonna be a make array column. We're gonna combine the order minus the original item, and we're gonna to add to it the new line item, and hit save. All right, now we just have to build out this functionality in our layout. All right, so in our layout, we already have an edit, but I don't wanna show the edit screen. I'd rather just show a new screen. So I'm gonna replace my edit screen with new screen, like this. And really what we might want is instead of just showing the new screen with an empty quantity and an empty notes, we probably wanna see what we had already entered. So I'm actually gonna create a custom action here. So actions for order helper, we're gonna create a new action. We are going to uh, set existing and show new, maybe. All right, so before we show a new screen, we wanna do a set column values like this, where the new quantity and the new notes, we're gonna preload those fields with the original quantity and the original notes. That way they know what it is that they're changing. All right, now we can show a new screen and we'll show it as a slide in. All right, done. Okay, so now if we wanted to edit this microscope one at 250, we can click on edit. All right, again, we can arrange some of these things here. And so the things that we want to change are the quantity. So it's gonna be a number column and the notes, which is a text column. Okay. So here we have a updated quantity. And we can call this updated notes. We see that it already 
pre-filled those items for us. And then we want a button to cancel or save. So just like before, we'll do a button block. The first one can be save, where this is gonna be our submit action. The second one will be a cancel. Okay, and the cancel will just go back a screen or close the overlay. Okay, and lastly for our save, we're gonna do a set column values. And we're gonna set in our user profile, our order items will be our new line item array. All right, let's test this out. So again, we saw that microscope one electron, let's change it to five regular. Like that, we hit save. Oh, we probably wanna close the overlay, don't we? All right, let's make this a custom action. All right, so in addition to this, let's close the overlay. And let's also show notification to, what would you say, Up, uh, order updated. Done, all right, try again. So save, like that. Okay, pipettes, maybe we only needed four of those. All right, I don't think I want them to click into anything. So on this collection, I'm gonna remove the show detail screen item click action, like that. So that way they can click and it's not gonna do anything. All right, and then we can remove an item or update an item. Like that. And again, all of this is just being saved inside of our users order items. All right, so now it's time to actually submit our order. So I'm gonna add one last button here. And we're gonna say save or submit order. And again, this could be a two step for now, I'm just gonna do the one. And when we submit this order, what we want is to transfer the items that are inside of our order items column in our users table to that of the orders in our orders table. So we wanna do an add row, and then we want to clear out our users table, so to reset the order. So our action's gonna be a custom action here. Let's call this submit order. Okay, the first thing is gonna be an add row action. We're gonna to add to our orders table. And then here's some of the values. It can be anything we want here. So app user's email, timestamp of the order, our order items, or gonna be our user profile, order items. I'm thinking we also want maybe the total. That way we don't have to calculate anything after the fact. So let's call this total. It's gonna be a number column. I think that's all we need. Okay, let's go back into this. Our total is going to be our user profile order total. All right, after we've added that row, we're gonna go ahead and clear out our existing order. So that's gonna be a set column values in our user profile table again. And we're gonna clear our order items. And then we can show notification and say order submitted and then close. All right, let's give this a test. We hit submit order, boom, order submitted. Now, you probably wanna hide the value, hide the button, show a message that says like, hey, you have nothing in your order, go order some things. We can create some additional components here if we wanted to in order to hide all these things. But now in our orders table, hey, we now have who ordered, when they ordered, the total of our order, and all of the order items as JSON in this array. So now that we've submitted this order, I guess the very last thing that we would have to consider is how are people gonna see this submitted order? Who are we submitting it to? Uh, how are we gonna craft some sort of screen or JSON that'll allow us to submit this order somewhere? We can actually uh, just repurpose our order helper table. You just wanna make sure you have enough rows to account for viewing an order, uh, which shouldn't be a problem because it's the same amount of rows that you'll use to take the order. And we just have to build context. 
right? So in order to view our order history, uh, you can place that wherever you'd like. Maybe we're gonna place it inside of our user profile here. And you wanna see like your current orders. Uh, we can create a collection here of orders. So the source will be orders and we can just filter it where our email is the signed in user. We're not gonna add anything here or edit anything. Uh, the order can show the total of the order, maybe when the order was, that timestamp. And we can show some items if we wanted to. We can count how many items there are or something. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave that blank. All right, so here's our order. And when we dive into this row, we now have the context of this order. Right? So maybe we want to see the order items here. Okay, so in order to do this, we need to, again, parse out that JSON. We can repurpose our order helper table to do that, but we need to use a little bit of trickery. So the first thing we're going to do is publish this app. By publishing the app, it's going to allow us to leverage a cool little feature in Glide, and that's by using uh, URL parameters. So what's neat is that when you're on any detail screen in Glide, the URL will include the row ID of the record that you're viewing. So if I were to come to my data section here, we see that our row ID for this order is 1ATU. Fine. So if I go back to our data table and go to our order helper table, we can leverage that row ID in order to build some context to pull out the array that we need to uh, parse out. Okay, so I'm going to create a new column here in our order helper table. We will call this view URL. It's going to be a template column where we're going to set any variable and replace that variable with the URL of the current screen. So we see here that here is that one ATU row ID within inside of the URL of the screen we're actually viewing. All right, let's move forward. We're going to go ahead and figure out which order this is by querying it. So I'm going to say query order. It's going to be a query column. We're going to query our orders. And we're going to filter where the row ID of the order is included in this row's URL. Okay. So because the row ID is existing there, it finds the order that matches. From here, we're going to go ahead and grab the order items. So this is view order items. It's going to be a single value column, a single value column from the query. So we're going to grab the first, which should be the only, uh, from the query order. And we're going to grab those order items like that. All right, and now that we have the order items in here, we're gonna rinse and repeat. We're gonna do the exact same thing that we did uh, over here when we had an order items array here. We can parse out the line ID, we can parse out all of these items uh, just using this exact same functionality. So we can call, let's see, add a column to the right. We'll call this line item. It's going to be a single value column. We're gonna grab the from the start. Our row is going to be the index. We're going to grab from our order items from that single value column. Save. All right, so again, they're on their own row now. And again, now we can parse things out again. Oh, we forgot to put the view. All right, so we can call this view ID. Actually, we only probably need to see the things that we want, right? So we can do view uh, name. This is going to be our query JSON column. The JSON is going to be that line item. We're going to grab the name and the price. I wonder if we should have stored the quantity and price again, because otherwise we have to recraft it. But you get the idea, right? So we can store out all those things again, just like we did before, and display that here in our order helper table. So in our list, we can point it to order helper table, get rid of all the things. Okay, we're going to filter it to where the view uh, name is not empty or ID is not empty. So here we can show the title being our name 
and so forth. And we'll just have to just configure some more columns to show exactly what the order was. I think you and I can agree that this is kind of an advanced topic and you might be wondering why in the world would I do this when I could just create a new table called order items and call it a day. I wouldn't have to mess with any JSON. I wouldn't have to create any helper tables and you'd be correct. And if you are on the enterprise plan or even the business plan and you had access to glide big tables where you could store a million rows in, in your data table, I would say maybe just go that route. But if you wanted to leverage inline arrays and work with some JSON in order to preserve the amount of rows you're actually using in your app, then I would say that this is a nice functionality for you. Or if you're trying to craft some JSON anyway because you need to call some API in a third party platform, then this works out really well because you have to craft that JSON ahead of time anyway. If you have any questions at all about what I built in this video, feel free to reach out to me in the comments below. You can also reach out to me in the Glide community forum or on X at rpetito. And as always, thanks for watching.